no writer should leave any money that's due to them on the table. If someone owed you just, I don't know, five euros, you would, we would be happy if you received the five euros, I suspect, even if you had a million euros. <laughs> if someone owes you money, they should have it. And if you don't collect it, then it might go to someone who really doesn't have the right to that money. You're listening to Music Growth Talks, the podcast for musicpreneurs with Andrew Apanov. Hello, hello, dear listeners of the Music Growth Talks podcast. My name is Andrew Apanov and this is episode number 122. I've got a very special guest today. Her name is Mandy Aubrey and I recommend you uh, saving these episodes and listening to it at least twice as there might be quite a lot of new information in here. Uh, music publishing is a complex world uh, to say the least and of course most of you will be familiar with um, some of the things uh, we've discussed in our conversation but I myself kept confused in terms during our chat yet Mandy laid it all out perfectly. She really is good at explaining um, uh, this stuff, uh, a difference between publishing administration and a publishing deal, how royalties are collected from streaming and why you might be losing the money owed to you for good rights at this moment, how to collect performance royalties from other countries, uh, song trust, rich history and relationship with downtown records uh, and a lot more. Uh, just stay tuned and listen to the episode in full, I promise it's packed with some really good information and as a bonus towards the end um, of this recording you will hear mainly offering a 10% discount code on the sign up fee at Son Trust. so the code is dotted music uh, all capitals uh, one word dotted music uh, and it's also mentioned in the show notes at dotedmusic.com and in any case just listen to the show till the end for all the details Many welcome to Music Growth Talks. I am excited to welcome you on the show. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. Thanks for having me. So yeah, it's it's it took us some time to schedule it, but finally uh, making it happen. I really liked the, um, the presentation, the session you did at Future Music Forum in Barcelona a couple months back, and um, I've got a bunch of questions uh, to you about Song Trust, and uh, I see how. Like what kind of questions some of uh, our listeners might be asking about that. But before we get there, do you mind sharing with us a bit of uh, uh, of your story and what you've been up to in the music and other industries so far? Of course, that's no problem. So I've worked in the music industry for over over two decades now. My first position was um, at Mercury UK International in London where I was a marketing assistant, and I did that for a couple of years. And then I moved over to the Netherlands, and I began as international promotions manager for Roadrunner Records, moving on to international product manager, and finishing up as director of international product management at Roadrunner. It was such a thrilling time to be at Roadrunner. It was when they were breaking bands as diverse as Slipknot to Nickelback, with some machine head and typo negative and fear factory and so many great bands in between. But, you know, coming to the end of, of that time, I was ready for a change. So I then was looking for another position and I was lucky enough to enter the parallel universe of music publishing with a company called Vintage House, which was actually on my doorstep, <laughs> which I'd never known about before. And I was, began as um, what they called at the time a relationship manager, and that, that job was looking after the clients. And at the time, Vintage House was relatively small, and it was such a good experience because I got very involved in everything from the client services, but also the administration side of publishing. So I think that's where I really learned how to, to do the best for the clients and to, to understand how they can collect their royalties. Right. And I did that for a decade ending up as head of client relations. And then I think it was September 2016, the music division of Vintage House was sold to Cobalt. And as such, I think by April 2017, I had left the company. And luckily, Downtown Music Publishing, which is the parent company of Song Trust, they had used to be a client of Vintage 
house back in the day before they set up their own infrastructure for collecting, collecting, sorry, worldwide. And um, I used to look after them and, and luckily they remembered me and, and um, were looking to expand into Europe. And that's how I ended up at Song Trust. And that was about a year and a couple of months ago now. Exciting. And uh, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Uh, it's quite amazing about Roadrun and uh, all the things you've been doing in the music industry. And I'm glad that you shared a bit of that um, history. When for someone who just uh, hears about Song Trust, for, Song Trust for the first time, it may just, you know, there is a bunch of uh, music companies out there providing services to musicians. And um, some musicians uh, grow kind of skeptical, become skeptical about uh, new companies when they hear about uh, someone because uh, it's just been, it's, it's been a very interesting space with many services coming and going. And uh, when you don't um, see the, the legacy, what, what stands behind uh, a project, you may not fully understand the scope of it. And I was listening to an interview with Justin Kelfowitz, the, the, the founder of uh, SunTrust. Is he? Yeah. Or is, is it the correct title? Of, uh... Yes, that's correct. I think also Joe Cognius III. I think together they, they started the company about seven or eight years ago now. And yeah, so that... that uh, he was an, uh, a guest on uh, on the podcast of, uh, of a friend of mine, uh, Aaron Bethune, uh, about the Noise podcast, and I was listening to the ho- uh, history of uh, downtown music and all the like. It's just mind blowing when you. It, it's really a rich history and of uh, of working in the publishing space, and when you understand how it's all connected to Sun Trust, it all feels a lot more uh, trustful for you. So I, I just want to mention that uh, understanding this background is quite important. I know that it's um, it's kind of a broader history question here, but do I understand correctly that uh, Sun Trust uh, is uh, the foundation of Sun Trust is the technology that has been used in downtown music, and it's something that became more of a public offering. So how how the the uh, the two are connected? Yes, it is a bit confusing. So Downtown is actually the original company that still exists and operates by itself. But if you wanted to distinct differentiate between Downtown and Song Trust, basically Downtown is concentrating more on the creative side and you know developing writers, and Song Trust is the administrative engine behind the collection process also for Downtown. But we do no creative. When I say creative, that is in everyday terms, something like if you had a writer and you thought that writer would be great if, if he or she wrote with XYZ writer and you pair them together, you develop them. Also acting on um, to find sync synchronization opportunities, for example, thinking that song would be great for XYZ or having the contacts with various ad agencies who may be looking for a song that fits their new car advert or something, and then putting the song with the ad and, and getting it accepted. Song Trust is literally just, just, I say just, it's a big just because it's a huge job, but our focus is on making sure that we're collecting all the royalties derived from the use of the works, not creating the uses in the first place. Now, the idea behind Song Trust came from the fact that at the time, there was no one really offering the possibility for anyone and everyone, no matter who they were and what their current, past, future expectation of royalties could or, or was, to be able to collect royalties directly, efficiently, and well, <laughs> worldwide. So that's why Song Trust was set up. You can literally go to songtrust.com, you can sign up, and within a day, you can have your songs entered in the system. You can have those songs within our process, which is the direct collection from the collection societies, and we can collect for you. I think historically, such a service hasn't been made available to anyone and everyone. So only the lucky few would have the possibility to have their royalties collected. And whilst there have obviously over the last few decade, decade and a half or more, there have been companies like Vintage House where I worked and Cobalt and other places who are offering administration as opposed to a more traditional publishing deal. Those companies are still relatively selective in whom they offer the service to, whereas Song Trust offers it to everyone. That's 
a very clear explanation. I'm glad that you uh, made the distinction between a, a traditional publishing company and SonTrust. It's very interesting that uh, it's unique in its own way and for, for someone new to the, to the whole uh, oftentimes confusing topic of publishing, it may just be very interesting why it's not been available to uh, at, at that scale, you know, to some writers and and publishers as well before. I think also, if I may just interrupt for a second, Andrew, the technology behind our collection process is obviously integral. It can't possibly be made available to everyone such a service as SongTrust provides because it took a lot of development in order to get to where we were. In order to handle over a million copyrights, we really had to make sure that the technology and especially when you have a service where people can, if they want to, sign up relatively anonymously. They, they, yes, they put their names in the system, but if they don't want to talk to anyone, they don't need to. So you have to be sure that the tech behind it is is um, faultless and that the system works in such a way that when the songs are added, the songwriters are added, the splits are added, etc., that it works. And it does work. But we make it look quite simple, but obviously it took quite a lot of tech to get to that stage. Exactly. That's why I wanted to emphasize the background behind the company. I think that understanding where it's coming from really helps uh, seeing why it's solving this very complex issue. You cannot just uh, start it from scratch and have all of these um, connections with uh, uh, different uh, collecting societies across the world. It's just like it's it's massive amount of uh, connections and the data. So uh, that part is interesting. And uh, you mentioned how other companies like Cobalt and uh, and and so on. They uh, they they may be very selective, and uh, SonTrust makes uh, uh, the process of uh, collecting publishing royalties more available to everyone. Do you, can you give us an idea of what kinds of uh, songwriter may find uh, use of the platform because some artists we've been working with who don't work with publishers who self-release their music they may just not even expect there to be much royalty so they think they already covered with their performing rights organization for example they just may not know how exactly you know it works and they don't expect any uh, additional royalties to even come in but uh, I guess that you know some you would expect to have some kind of traction to expect to get something from their platform. So yeah, so can you give us an idea of who it's for? Yeah. Well, first of all, I don't think that any writer should who wants to well, no writer should leave any money that's due to them on the table. If it's theirs, if someone owed you just I don't know five euros, you would we would be happy if you received the five euros. I suspect even if you had a million euros. <laughs> If someone owes you money, they should have it. And if you don't collect it, then it might go to someone who really doesn't have the right to that money. So first and foremost, every writer should feel that they are worthy of collecting what's due to them. Now, there are various ways that royalties can be generated. And I won't give you a whole publishing lesson or lecture in this uh, situation. But very, very Briefly, of course, you can. You, there are royalties due from the performance of of the songs that you've written internationally. There are royalties due from streaming. There's the royalty from performances on radio and television and and in films um, at the box office in various countries, and obviously from YouTube and and all sorts of streams. Now, a service like SongTrust has access, direct access, to all the different income sources that exist for copyright collection of royalties. And um, the beauty of a song trust agreement is that as well as our term, our exploitation period being very short, we will do a 12-month deal. You have the choice to put in just one of your titles or all of your titles or some of your titles. That is quite unusual. Mostly an administrator would want a whole body of works or, or, or all the works or, or you know future works, whatever it could be. We take the position that the artist writer's career is quite fluid and, and it's, you know, you don't quite know, especially for a new songwriter, where you're going to end up in a couple of years. It could be that your band, as a, one example, is touring currently and there are royalties to be collected from that tour and you might have an EP out, but you don't know whether something else may change in the coming years. 
meaning that you want to have the flexibility. You may well want to keep your songs with a company like SongTrust for years and years and years because our fees are low, our flexibility remains very high. However, you don't have to. And that's the peace of mind that I think SongTrust can offer our clients, that they have the mechanism to collect the royalties from what is happening now. If you wait too long, the royalties fade away (laughs) and you can't collect them anymore. So it's very important that especially new songwriters who have value every penny that is possible for them to collect, that they do collect it and, and we make it possible. It's hard to give a short answer to such a question, but I hope that was clear. <laughs> I'm glad, no, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned those things I was about to ask you later on. Uh, and I do think it's it's really valuable to, to an artist uh, because you never know what will happen in a year or in five years. That's absolutely true. So just as you mentioned, and, uh, if you get uh, a major record label deal and, uh, and they take over the... Uh, publishing administration of, of your songs, uh, as I understand, you can basically stop working with song trust at that point and just uh, move on to, you know, just hand over to uh, to another publisher. Well, but may I just say that obviously a lot of people, they, they view the major record deal or major publishing deal as perhaps the holy grail of where they might want to end up. But song trust really feels that there's, um, our mission is to also educate our clients in terms of what publishing is and what it means to have an an administration deal versus a publishing deal. When you make um, a service available to anyone and everyone to join, you have a a moral duty to obviously make sure that people are informed about what they're doing. Now, a lot of people will aspire to getting that publishing deal, but they need to be aware that a traditional publishing deal comes with a lot of stipulations regarding their rights. They may find that they don't have the rights to their works for a long time, if not ever again. They will, if their rights, their copyrights are generating a lot of royalties, they may find that for every 100 euros, they're only getting 50 euros. Or if they're getting that once their advance has been paid off. And it's very complicated, obviously, to explain. But I really think that it is not always what you should or one should aspire to is the publishing deal. I think many very, very successful writers may have traditionally had a more traditional publishing deal and then been able to move to a company like Song Trust. And they really value that flexibility and the ability to be really hands on with the copyright collection royalty process, you know? Makes sense, makes sense. And this is the theme that uh, came up on this podcast quite a few times about being very careful with uh, chasing major record deals and it's it's really not always what uh, an act really wants to end up with uh, so, so it, 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 it can be really tricky and I'm glad that you clarified this point as well I find like even for I've been like in the music industry for uh, like 15 years I when talking about publishing and licensing all the related topics I I'm I have to f- Think carefully about the terms I use because I keep messing some terms up myself all the time. This is really <laughs> <do> complex. <laughs> yeah, artist and songwriter, you know, it's not always the same yes, person absolutely. or and, people. And they, or even, yes, <laughs> but I do yeah. it still too. Yeah. Administration, publishing deals. It's, but it's important and I'm so glad that you at SonTrust do uh, quite a bit of educational work. This is absolutely crucial and uh, i hope that uh, these podcast episodes will clear a few things up for our listeners as well i still think that we may want to give a couple more specific examples i want our uh, listeners who are self-distributed uh, singers and writers for example or bands who maybe have record labels but haven't been doing much in the in the publishing area so one thing that you mentioned was related to distribution. And uh, so many of our listeners will distribute their songs on different um, streaming platforms, uh, online stores from Spotify to iTunes uh, and and, uh, Amazon and uh, all the good stuff. And they collect the royalties from, uh, not they they collect the royalties for the compositions they now I, I keep uh, uh, doubting myself about the terms I use. So they collect uh, the uh, uh, royalties for the recordings they sell for, for these uh, platforms and for the streams they get. And um, oftentimes they're just missing the point that uh, as 
songwriters as someone who usually own 100% of publishing rights for the songs, their own money, especially uh, from, you know, all the different sales and streams that are coming from different parts of the world, not just from their home country. So maybe a few comments on how Son Trust helps in that case. Yeah, well, you know, as the barrier to entry for recording artists has been removed through access to distribution, we're doing the same for songwriters. So if you are able, in very simple terms, again, to just use a distribution platform and, and put your song up there and have it uh, available for streaming on the various streaming platforms, then royalties are due from that. Publishing royalties are due. And we make it possible for people to collect. Now, it's not at the time, you know, it's not it's not really going to be a huge amount of money at the very beginning unless it's a huge success right away. So a lot of people will just perhaps leave it. But I don't think that that's a good idea. You you never know what's going to blow up. And if you get everything registered right from the start, you're ready to collect in real time, which is going to be the best possibility of collecting the most royalties as soon as possible. Many distribution platforms are acknowledging this now, and they are actually making it possible for their clients, their own clients on the master side, meaning what's your, the recording they're making it possible for those people to already automatically sign up to collect their publishing royalties because the distributors also see that this is a this is an income stream and songtrust is actually powering the admin behind a lot of these distribution companies at the back end yeah makes sense thank you for explaining <laughs> no that is important so uh, uh yeah i guess the it's something that you should check in with uh, a, a distributor you're already using if, uh, if if it's covered and understand what kind of services they provide exactly. And um... But may I just add that, of course, that if you sign up by default with the publishing of a distributor, then that's one avenue. On the other hand, you could also sign up directly with SongTrust, depending on what it is that you're looking for, your relationship with your distributor, or how you view the future with the distributor. Normally, the, well, I can't say for certain for every distributor, but you have to look at what the terms are within the distribution way of the distribution platforms, publishing collections. Obviously, I know that, that you know, through SongTrust, you can have a 12-month exploitation period, and it's a 15% fee and, and a one-time one-off $100 sign-up fee. So you have to compare you know, that with what it could be that the distribution platform may be asking for and, and also consider whether for you or the writer that you may be representing or the producer who has writer copyrights, whomever it is, what makes most sense? Do they want to have a direct song trust client account or do they want to do it simply, quickly, and easy through easily through the distribution platform. I think everything has a story, right? You have to just look at. You have to always do some research, and and I hope that SongTrust. You know, we we've got so many um, question and answers on our platform, where on our dashboard, where where you can just look at it and try to get the answers for for what you might be inquiring about. So hopefully, other opportunities for publishing collections uh, give you the chance to also research and find out what could be best. Doing the research is a great advice here for sure. And what I'm hearing, just to kind of sum it up, you you may in a way be paying for the convenience of using uh, a distributor, distributor's uh, publishing solution because in, in just in theory, uh, you may end up locking a composition for like for a, a, a longer period of time that than you'd like while you usually are not really tied to a distributor in terms of the actual dis distribution part too much. You can just uh, switch to another distributor. Yeah, because it's probably, again, this isn't my, my complete area of expertise, but I believe that you can switch distributor relatively simply on the recording side. However, you're, I was always taught in publishing that, you know, do it once, do it right. So if you are allowing a distributor to take care of your publishing and that means that they are responsible for making sure that your songs are correctly registered at all the copyright societies around the world and at the digital services and so forth. Whilst it may be possible to relatively quickly terminate with the distributor also for the publishing, you have to bear in mind that there's this um, 
this trail of activity at the Collection Society with how the song was registered. Now, whilst the copyright chain, the, the split and the names of the writers won't be changing, the name of the administrator who is, is contractually allowed to collect those royalties generated on behalf of the writer and pay to the writer may change. You know, so, so then, oh, it's hard to explain, but every time you make a change, it's a little bit disruptive with the Copyright Society. It takes time. If a new administrator comes on board, then the old, old administrator has to relinquish their right to collect on behalf of the writer. And there's all these stipulations, quite rightly so, so in terms of what the old administrator's collection rights are. Do they have a post-term collection period? When did the actual collection right expire and so forth? So that again comes down to what I'm trying to simply explain about really thinking carefully. If, if you feel that your distribution option is not set in stone or you're not wholly convinced, or you may want to go through one distributor for one album and another distributor for another album or, or whatever it could be, you may find that it makes more sense to have a designated publishing administrator, such as Song Trust, to look after all your titles or the titles that you wish to put with us. You don't have to, but it just gets complicated. So, yeah, it's hard. Uh, no, that's that's a good point. And to all the to our uh, distributor partners who may be listening to us right now, and uh, we've, we we know quite uh, you know at least a couple distributors we've been working with who provide the publishing services. I, I haven't been using it too much to comment on that and I like respect what they do a hundred percent. I think it's it's really like it's what you you just mentioned. Like just if you are committed to working with a particular distributor and you can just go, you know, and, and trust them with not just the distribution process but with, with publishing, just understanding that you should probably commit to that and, and do your research and understand make sure that they do the publishing part kind of properly um uh, it naturally it feels to me as a, a smart and wise decision to go with someone who just specializes in publishing but it's yeah still like to anyone already using that i think it's good it's just that as you as, i'm so glad that you explained that it's a very complex process you don't want to change you yeah. and i agree yeah it's certainly not to to um put anyone off going through a distribution platform for their publishing. And, and as I mentioned, some some huge distributors are using SongTrust at the other end to collect on their behalf anyhow, because they thankfully respect that this is a really complicated process and it needs to be done properly. So we're all for that as well. So, you know, every writer has an, an opportunity to decide what the best collection structure could be for them. Very good stuff. And I'm linking to the uh, frequently asked questions on SunTrust. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you've got a bunch of questions uh, answered already. So I'm linking to all this stuff. And, you know, I will also link to this page, which I discovered uh, before we started this call. I didn't see it before. You've got an royalties estimator tool on the website. I haven't used it yet. So is it like, can you actually gets an a rough prediction of how how much in royalties you are owed from yes this is really cool yes it is it is so yes you just put the name of the song in the copyright control that you or the writer you're inquiring about has and it will give you a rough idea of how much in in royalties from spotify in particular will, will be due to you so it gives you a guideline and don't be dissuaded because obviously so many songs will have a very, very low income expectation. But you know how things change. And, and it just comes back to what I was saying that, you know, if there's anything to be collected, just go collect it. And also have your songs registered with the copyright societies and services, because no matter how successful or not a song may be on the streaming services, someone may want to use your song for a, a sync opportunity or, or whatever it could be. And if they know where to find you, they can find the song, they know who's administering it. Even though Song Trust is not directly obtaining these uses, if anyone comes to us and says they want to use one of the writer's songs that we, we control, we will obviously let the writer know immediately and then it can be handled. Clear on that. I just wanted to ask you briefly on the, I mean, this really will be a, a very kind of uh, amateur kind of question. So relationship of like what you do and uh, and what uh, performing rights organization does. 
Well, the performing rights organization only distributes performance royalties. And there are other income streams that are not performance royalties. Even a stream has a mechanical element. In the old days, a mechanical could be very simply explained as if if you had a CD. <laughs> this is in my generation, but you have a CD and you sell, um, you know, 100 copies, then you can expect X amount of royalties from those mechanicals off the sale. Same with iTunes downloads. Streaming has differing elements of both performance and mechanical royalties that are to be distributed to the, the rights owners from the use of the, the streaming or whatever. So if you're only registered with a performing rights organization, you won't have access to all the income streams that are possible and paid out from the use of, of the works. Now, the first reason why one should be registered with a performing rights organization is that performing rights in particular are structured in such a way that a publisher is only able to collect 50% of what's called the publisher's share of performance, with the writers being paid directly by the collection societies, the performing rights societies, for the other 50% writer's share of performance. Now, the actual percentages do vary if you're a German writer or a writer affiliated to Gamer in Germany or SASM in France or Sabam in Belgium or Boomer in the Netherlands and so forth. Then a writer is able to collect even higher than the 50% that I mentioned of the writer's share of performance directly. And the publisher is entitled to collect less. It varies from a two thirds, one thirds in the writer's favor for performing rights and sometimes 50 50 on mechanicals as well from the collection, the mechanical societies. It's very hard to say this very simply, but you know, so if I, if let me think if I can try to make it clearer. Okay. You need to be registered with a performing rights organization to obtain your, what's called your writer's share of performance. Registering or affiliating with one performing rights society, usually in your own territory, makes a lot of sense if you can. And then if you have a partner like Song Trust, we are directly registered with all the other performing rights organizations internationally. So we can collect directly for you for, in all the other territories and your own domestic territory as well. And in, um, by registering directly the titles at all the collection societies worldwide, where the performance royalties are generated, let's say there was 100 euros in performance royalties generated, let's say it was in the UK, then 50 euros would come to Song Trust to be paid through to, to you in, in terms of our role. But the other 50 euros goes directly with no fee taken from Song Trust or anyone directly to the writers. Now, there are also collection societies and services who take care of the mechanicals. And we're also directly affiliated with those. A few Perhaps people in the UK may be with the MCPS or some uh, Americans may join Harry Fox, but that's still going to not give the best, most direct access to the mechanicals generated in the rest of the world. Did that answer your question, Andrew? It's, it's a big question. <laughs> and so in other words, I think that some of the, also some of the listeners, some of the artists and songwriters I've worked with, they assume that if they are with ASCAP or I don't PRS in in the UK, they're pretty much covered globally, but there are still more money to be collected from performance, from live performances, from any performance of composition. Well, live performances, if I, I don't mean to correct you, live performances would come under performance royalties, but that is more of an active process of collection. So that's also where, a song, where an administrator like Song Trust can really help. But in particular, it's mechanicals that, because a PRO means a performing rights organization. And as such, that doesn't include the mechanicals. And most, I think in the simplest ways, you just need to think that streaming, which is one of the, the first activities that one can expect as a new songwriter in particular, will have both the mechanical and the streaming element. And if you're just with a performing rights organization, you're not going to have access to the mechanical side of the money that's due, so you won't be collecting all the money that's that can that has been uh, generated through that activity. Right, clear. I, many, I I enjoy learning from you. You just you you have a really cool way of explaining things and very very straight. This is this is the I usually tell everyone like I work with uh, directly that I think that this is the most complex area of the music industry. Or like, like it's just really difficult to understand the details. 
and sometimes even the general things you you have a really good uh, and and clear great way to to explain things related to this uh, complex area of, of um, royalties and publishing and i i, I do appreciate that i, I would like and no one yeah. no one should ever feel stupid um if they don't understand it or if they have to ask the same question a hundred times about publishing sometimes even i still get a bit confused of course because it's an ever-changing environment with new rules new players new everything all the time so you know never be afraid to ask a question about uh, this matter because it's always worth asking it's a great advice here absolutely and uh, yeah so uh, we i can't recommend enough educating uh, yourself as much as possible in this area. So just a, a hint to our listeners right now to, it's not a bad idea to to read and listen to resources about the topic. So I would want to normally like talk for a few more hours uh, with you about these, 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 these things, but we will have to wrap it up soon. Uh, do you, so do you have a very specific kind of call to action here? So uh, is it just uh, like anyone uh, listening to us right now can just uh, go ahead and and sign up or or uh, learn the price or do you would you recommend uh, doing some kind of a pre check like if you are getting just you know I don't know a few hundred uh, Spotify plays and don't really get a lot of traction this may not be the right fit for you or no no I think that obviously I'm biased but I think it's always the right option for anyone and they shouldn't be thinking about how much money am I going to make it's too embarrassing it's not enough money. That is just not the way. It's such a good start on the publishing and you know the publishing ladder. You can register and you can add just one title and see how it goes, and it gives you an opportunity to really have hands-on experience with what publishing administration is all about. I thoroughly recommend if anyone wants to research more information that they simply go to songtrust.com and in particular blog.songtrust.com. You can read all the articles and. We have Q&As with or spotlights, client spotlights with some clients where they've talked about their careers and how they got started or what they're doing currently. You know, never feel that you're not good enough or, or advanced enough to join us and have the peace of mind to know that it's flexible. The only rule being that once you add a title, it's with us for the 12 month exploitation period. So it's with us. You can't give it to someone else to collect the publishing on simultaneously. But I think that there's enough literature on the site, you know, and, and yeah, feel free to ask any questions that you may need to. I think there's a way to answer questions directly from our website as well. I'm linking to everything once again. Do you want to comment on the pricing structure just to be fully transparent? So, so uh, yeah, we understand how, how it works or if it's changing regularly, we can just, you know, link to the section on the website. No, no, it doesn't change. I mean. If you sign up from, you go to songtrust.com and you click join, then it's a one-time per songwriter sign up fee of $100, which is just, obviously that changes to the equivalent in euros, pounds, or whatever currency you may have locally. That is the setup fee and that's it. I think you get 50 songs that you can put in for that amount. And then you have immediate access to our global direct collection infrastructure. Andrew, let's talk about possibly, I think I can give you a discount available to anyone who mentions your podcast so that we can give a small discount on the $100 one-time sign-up fee if they put the discount code in the discount code section when I signing up. I love discounts. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, that's no problem. That would be great. Uh, so you just tell me what uh, the code is and I'll uh, promote it actively. Actually, that is quite a few artists of ours would uh, would want to use that as well, I'm pretty sure. Like uh, the artists we serve as an agency. So I would absolutely yeah, yeah appreciate that. Brilliant. Uh, so uh, insightful Personally, I'm hungry for more information, but we just have to wrap it up. But I hope that our listeners also just want to learn more. And uh, the blog is definitely a great resource from SoundTrust and just um, just going, uh, checking out the platform and uh, seeing if uh, it's, uh, you know, if it's something like feels the right fit, then just joining. I just like also for full transparency and I'm not like affiliated with you guys i really love what you do here i think it's extremely important for the 
in the music sector for independent musicians, uh, producers, songwriters, uh, well, songwriters clearly, but independent artists who are just out there on their own, and uh, it's just it's a very important thing. So thank you, and thank you personally for for the work you do and educational as well. Yeah, so uh, I will also link to a bunch of social media profiles for SoundTrust and you, if you don't mind, uh, in the show notes. Of course, of course. Thank you very much for having me. I'm glad you said that I spoke clearly. Obviously, it's very hard to be succinct with <laughs> publishing, but I do my best. It was great. Thank you a lot. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as I did and I bet some of you got interested in the discount code Mandy mentioned. It's Dotted Music, one word, all capital letters, once again Dotted Music. Just go to SonTrust.com, click the sign up uh, link button out there and uh, use the code for uh, the 10% discount on the one of uh, uh, sign up the uh, per songwriter per 50 titles if I'm not mistaken. Um, all the details are also in the show notes. Go to datatmusic.com, look up MGT122, a post about this very episode. The links we talked about are right there, including Mandy's Twitter handle. If you have any feedback, don't hesitate to tweet her and me. I'm at meta, at, at meta Andrew on Twitter. Thank you for listening and till next time. You've been listening to Music Growth Talks with Andrew Apanov. Find more episodes and subscribe at musicgrowthtalks.com.